O'Keefe from Missouri in the building. What's up, man? What's going on, man? What up? I can't call it, man. I can't call it. I can't call it. So, so you from Missouri? Is is that's where you from? Uh, no. Well, I actually, grew up in Connecticut, and actually, with all my trucking jobs, kind of moved around the country. <laughs> okay, okay. So let me get this straight. You probably lost your phone, and and Missouri was the spot where you had to get another phone. <laughs> yeah, I just. Uh, uh, jobs took me everywhere, and wife and I actually agreed on living in out here. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, again, Keith in the building. So, my man, you, we we've been going back and forth, back and forth, and finally we got a chance to uh to uh get get on this conversation. I really do appreciate you uh taking the time and uh chopping it up with me. You know the best conversation starts over here on the Lockout Men podcast show. So Keith, man, without without further ado and, and all the at all the BS, uh let's start off with uh your beginnings, man. Like how did you start in trucking? Oh <laughs> that's actually a really funny story. Um I actually had a lot of issues going on when I left the military um, with an old girlfriend and a child. Um, and what that was, I was actually over a friend's house. We were drinking, and I put on, put in an online application to drive a truck. I literally forgot about that application. And then two weeks later, I was out in Indianapolis to see one trucking school. <laughs> Okay, okay. So wait. So one night with your buddy, you you and your what 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 was this a dare or something or is this just you and your buddy was just going back and forth like, man, I wonder what we're gonna do for the rest of our lives, man. <laughs> yeah, I really I really don't recall. That was over oh goodness, twenty years ago. <laughs> Damn it, man! So that that's how long that that's how long you held your CDLs, or that's how long you've been driving? I've been driving about nineteen years. Um, I actually just hung up the keys last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, wife and I decided it was time for a change of pace. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So you, so you, you gave it all up for family. Yes, I did. Okay, so was. So do, throughout your throughout your trucking career, man, the 19 years, I'm I'm sure you've seen a lot and you've been through a lot. But how how was how was that uh, how was that affecting the family? Oh, just missing um, events, holidays. I mean, you guys all know the drill. I mean, we're out there for weeks, months at a time, especially if you're a company driver. Uh-huh. And really don't have the freedom to see your family. Some places don't allow riders and all that good stuff. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, you 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 spent time in the military, right? How, how long you was in the military before you came out? Uh, ten years and two conflicts. Ten years, two conflicts. What what was the two conflicts? I was over in Iraq for Desert Storm, and I was also over in Bosnia. Oh man! Now the Desert Storm. I I'm not I'm I'm not hip to the second one, but definitely Desert Storm was a was a big one for us. Did you did when you went over there? Did you see any action? A little bit. <laughs> what 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 did do you got? Well, let me ask you this. I don't know if anybody asked you this, and and if I'm stepping over the line, man, please let me know. But did you get a kill count over there? Uh, that's something I'd rather not talk about. I got you. I got you. I, I appreciate your honesty, man. And like I said, I, you know, if I, if I overstep, I, I apologize. But, um, so you spent 10 years in the military. Uh, how, now when you was in the military, was you, was you with the current, was you still, was you still with your current family? No, no. Oh, okay. So that didn't put that didn't put an effect on anybody when you went to the military, though, right? Correct. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, 
how was how how is the military different from trucking? Because I mean, you know, you you're able to travel just about you know the different continents and stuff like that. What what what's the what's the, Either what's the difference or what's the correlation with with trucking? Was it easy? Um, was it easier for you to get into trucking, or was was it difficult? It was actually really simple for me, um, especially being an infantryman. I mean, we had to adapt to all kinds of things, the weather conditions, climates, all kinds of good stuff. Um, the only difference with trucking is we're not looking over our back 24-7 if we're deployed. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so you came out. Uh, you, you got your family after you came out of uh, out of truck, uh, out of uh, military? Yes, sir. Um, actually, I met my wife. Um, actually, I was delivering to a school down in Georgia. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is actually funny. And um, I had a hotel. I had to wait on the trailer for the weekend, which wasn't a big deal. Um, they paid for my hotel and all that. But um, <laughs> my wife was actually a waitress at a Waffle House. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Walked up in there like, yo, let me get a uh, breakfast. Let me get us uh, some sausages. And hey, you 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 think you could lay that phone number on me too? <laughs> that that's how I went. <laughs> well, not really, but kind of. <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny thing was, my my wife had actually just gotten out of driving because she was actually an owner up, and uh, the. Parking lot was really small, and my wife was being a real smart aleck. So when I walked in, she's like, "You need me to park that thing for you." <laughs> Wait, oh, hold up, hold up, keep my, hold up. She was a truck driver, and yeah. and she went to work for the Waffle House. Well, help, well, it's a, help me, <laughs> whoa, help me understand that one, bro, because I, I, well, I, think, she, I think that's going to be one of the questions in the comments that's going to be like, bro, she was a <laughs> truck driver and she went to work for the Waffle House. What's up? Yeah, well, what it was, she was actually in a really bad relationship and mm -hmm. her at the time husband was a real uh, loser, you could say. Okay. Okay, 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 so, okay. Okay. So I, I her to get off the road and I took her back on the road. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, man. So all right, so let's get into it, man. You you know, you reached out to me. We was uh uh I believe you I, I believe you left a comment in, in one of the in oh, one a couple, of, Yeah, you left a couple of comments and you want to come on and, 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 and talk about uh what what is it? K K B trans transportation. K B transport out of South Sioux City, Iowa. Man, <laughs> so what 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 do you want? What do you want the people to know about K B? Oh my goodness, they are not what they say. Um, they really have me blocked on all social media because I will blast them on every corner or chance I get. Wow. Um. They they will run you tired. I would literally get messages in the middle of my ten hour break. Why am I not rolling yet? Ugh. So let let me let me it, let me start this off now. Now this is all number one. This is all from your experience. So you know this. You know the uh, information and the uh, and the conversation provided by the by the guests of the show does you know does not weigh on the lockout men podcast show i'm just saying um <laughs> but you you how, how long how long have you worked for K, kb i i stay with them nine months um in about in about seven months i started looking elsewhere and that employer actually told me you know just stick with them to show retainability Okay, so so that's your reason. So that, I did. So let's let's not just say that. Let's not just say that because just in case KB is watching, let's not just say that you're a disgruntled employee that's coming on just to blast the company, right? 
because some of the stuff that you some of the stuff that you're saying I have heard from multiple drivers. So there right. so there is a coincidence there. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So from your experience uh within the nine months that you that you was driving for them, let's start at the beginning. So how was you able to get on with uh KB? What was what was the conversation between you and the recruiter at the time that that kind of won you over? It was actually real well, they they did not win me over. I had already for I think it was seven or eight years prior to. So what had happened was I came off the road for about eight months to try to do the college thing. I had to use my military GI bill or I had to pay it back. Mm-hmm. Um, so I tried to go to TNC flatbed and for whatever reason, they're like, well, you don't have experience in flatbed. Oh, never. So it's not at all. KB, you know, it's the old Freightliner classics. And I was like, Ooh, those are actually pretty good looking trucks. But let me tell you, the two and all changed once I got the orientation. So at one point, the recruiter tells you one thing. What was some of the stuff, what was some of the red flags that you, that you noticed during orientation that the recruiter neglected to tell you? The minute you walk in, I forgot the gentleman's name. Uh, he, he, um, but he was the one giving the orientation. But they will literally talk down to you like you were raised to dirt. And this is that orientation? This is orientation, my friend. Wow. That's that's crazy. You you would think they try to you know have a good conversation with you guys, being that y'all trying to come in, but they 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 trying to down talk y'all like like what like what was some of the what was some of the things that was said? Well, it wasn't so much what they said it was how they went about their thing. They were very derogatory. Um, you know, say we don't care how much experience you have. You know. We know better, uh, basically telling us, you know, if you have a problem with your house, let us know, we'll fix your books for you. It, it was bad. All right. So, so you was able to, so you was able to bypass uh, orientation. Now you're with the company. Did you come in? Did, did you come in as, well, of course you came in as experience. So what was the amount that they that they offered you and what runs and what runs did you ran for them? Oh, the pay was actually horrible. Um when I was there, like I said, this was oh nine years ago, ten years ago. But I was actually now wife and I'd be lucky to burn a hundred dollars for them. Hold on, you broke up a little bit. You was lucky to bring what now? Maybe three hundred a week. Jeez, how many miles you would do? Oh, uh, oh, they push us two, three thousand. Okay, so and they had all these. So, from what I understand, from what I understand now, they they give you a guarantee of at least twelve hundred. What? What happened? What happened with that? And why you didn't? Uh, what you didn't qualify for it? That's why you was getting three hundred. I, I like I said, but it's um, but I mean, we get the models, but what it is is they make you pay for everything out of your pocket, toll, scales, all that. But then it would take them two to three weeks to reimburse you for it. Wow. Yeah, I used to I used to drive uh I used to drive for two companies that I had to I had to cover the tolls and the scales and you know they they said they would reimburse me and all like that. Luckily I ain't had no issues out of that. I mean I I got reimbursed the you know that pay that following paycheck. So that wasn't uh that wasn't a big issue. But what you saying is that you had to you had to fight for money that you was uh that you was using out of your pocket? That you were owed, yes. 
I, I don't know about now, but I've actually talked to some drivers, you know, because even though I'm off the road, I still talk to a lot of drivers. I actually have a friend of mine here visiting me that I went for a while on my last company. <laughs> So, so but yeah, they so, they say the same thing that KB is just a mess. So I, you know, I'm 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 still trying to get a hold of this driver. This this is about like maybe like about four years ago. He made a a, a viral a video that went viral with him having a conversation with his dispatcher. Uh, I'm still trying to get a hold of him and and then talk about that, but. Have you ever have you ever been in a situation where a dispatcher tried to force you to do something that wasn't safe safe for you? Uh, yes, actually, numerous times. Um, like I said, uh, I literally took a two hour nap one day. You know, just like any of us would do out there. And we start to get me. What were you taking that? Um. And just before my two hours was up, my dispatcher says, what do you think you're doing? I was like, excuse me? I was like, this is my truck. You know, I, I'm the one running it. And he's like, well, what if you have a blowout? I was like, oh, I have a blowout. I have a blowout. But all they care about is being at that place. Um, and like I actually said in one of my comments, they literally threatened me with the police. What happened with that? I had uh, two stops in North Carolina. My, um, I flew out of my trailer. Well, you know, McCain, which is where my delivery is for. Well, hold, hold, uh, that, hold, hold that thought. Uh, hold that thought, Keith. Are you talking to me through the speaker or, or Bluetooth or what? Uh, speaker. Okay, take me off the speaker because I'm getting a lot of feedback. Okay. Okay. Is that bad? Uh, are you talking to me on the phone? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm still getting. I'm still getting that same feedback. Uh, let me step out. Okay. There you go. There you go. That's a lot better. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. That's a hell of a lot better. Okay. All right. Go ahead with the story. Um. Now, if anybody knows anybody about McCain's, they don't allow repairs to be done on site. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to a truck stop, you know, where the uh, they could do repairs. They did the repairs well. Then I went back to McCain. They would chase me. So K and B and all their wisdom says, "Go to your second stop. We'll have them pull the first stop off, and then you know we'll take care of all of that." Wait, 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 Which, wait. Actually, wait, 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 wait. I think you skipped over. We was talking. Wait, you was talking about you was taking a nap. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you, oh, you my, talk, my head's so scatterbrained. You start talking about McCain. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. We skipped over. We skipped <laughs> over a record. We put on a new record. No, you, you, you was sleeping. You said you took a nap, and the yeah. dispatcher got on your case because of that. Um. They're more concerned about time. They don't care if you need sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, he did. He he rode, he rode me for probably a couple of days after that. They're like, "Oh, you can't do it. you can't do that." Well, I mean, if you you see, the, I think that was the other re, that that was the other thing that went on with the with the with the past driver that you know he was feeling fatigue, he needed to rest, and he felt that. You know, if he didn't get adequate, you know, get the rest that he needed, it was going to be a problem. But the 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 driver manager kept trying to talk him into driving and trying to, you know, kind of force him to, you know, you know, kind of kind of threaten like like threaten him for him to 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 complete that run, even though he knew that. He wasn't able to complete it because of his fatigue. So that's the same thing that went on uh, with you. You, 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 you uh, had that same problem with with the driver manager that try to that try to kind of like light threaten you into something to do and 
and you knew you couldn't do yeah, it? And yeah, you- it got to the point. It literally got to the point where I would stay at um, way stations intentionally. And if they would send a message during my 10-hour break, I'd go alert DOT about it. Okay, okay, okay. So you said you you said the the fleet manager kept riding you even days after that particular incident. So it, so what did he start to do? Started messing with your money or your miles or what? <laughs> it was it was all talk. Um, and and that, that's how they are. I mean, if you ever walked in their office, they're all college kids for the most part. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but yeah, it, it's a mess in there. Um, but yeah, it, it, they they don't care about anything. They have um, oh my god, I can't remember how many calls I've got from them. Um, but yeah, I mean, they'll mess with your sleep. Um, make sure you're up and rolling. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, and for me, those those were all red flags right there. You don't. You know, they, they know what the law is, mm-hmm. yet they still interrupt that sleep. Yeah, they try to, they they try to they try to put you know try to force you to do something. Uh, like I said, y- your story is not the first story that I heard about uh, with this company, man. I mean, you know, I, I I talked to a lot of drivers that that has similar stories like yours. All right, so let's let's put the new record on. You was talking about McLean. What 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 happened with what happened with them? Um, this is where I was explaining to you on your channel that um they actually threatened me with law enforcement. Well, what happened with it, that? It it was a Friday. Oh, but deliveries, um, North Carolina. We were a few hours apart, and there was actually a pilot in between them. I think it was Mabane. Mm-hmm. But, um, like I said, I didn't get off my first load because I had the airbag problems on the trailer. Right. So I go back to the second stop and deliver that. So then I decided to stop because it was the weekend, and McLean wasn't doing anything over the weekend. And they couldn't get me until Monday. Wow. Um, <laughs> I, I parked at a, I believe it was a, the pilot right there in the bank. But um, I started getting phone calls. Well, why you stopped? I was like, what, what are you talking about? And they're like, you have to be at the receiver. I was like, they're not doing anything until Monday. No, you need to be there. I was like, well, I'm not moving. I'm fine. So, so wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So do they know that the 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 receiver didn't take nothing until Monday? Did they, they know? They literally just sent me. Yeah, they literally just sent me a message on my Qualcomm saying they'll unload you Monday. Okay. So you get the message on the Qualcomm saying that, and you got and and you got some type of driver manager calling you to to tell you to go there? What what are you telling you? To go there and wait on the property until Monday? That was exactly what he was telling me. But McLean don't and don't I, don't let nobody stay on their property though. Correct. He's like, well I don't care if there's no parking. You need to find some. But well, you but you was already parked. I'm confused. Oh this, like I said, they do not care. Um, like I said, after I hung up on them, I thought it was over. Now they're calling me back, threatening me with the police that if I don't go there, you know, they're going to have me arrested for stealing their equipment. Huh? Wait, 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 key, 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 key. Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up, wait. Bro, you, you went to McLean. You found out at McLean as well as your Qualcomm message that they did not deliver or they did not, you know, they don't take deliveries over the weekend and they will deliver, they'll take delivery Monday morning. Okay. So you go to the, so you go to the pilot 
shut down for the weekend until Monday. I mean, I, I got a problem with that as well because, you know, they try, you know, some companies try to play you like, Okay, well, since you're still on the load, we don't have to give you no detention, no layover. So I have an issue with that. But you're you're already parked at a pilot for the weekend for you to have for you to have this dude. Did did he? So he's not. So he's not knowing that you you was already told that you was they wasn't going to take delivery until Monday. I told them to check Qualcomm. He's like, well, the owners want you there. I'm like, huh? the owners are nowhere around. The owners are can be. And then he's like, if you don't show up, if we don't see you rolling, I think it was like in 30 minutes or some ungodly number. He's like, we're going to call the police and have you arrested for selling our equipment. Wow. Okay. And that was actually... One of my last straws with them. Um, I would imagine that, that, that would have been. That's mine when, well. because that was at the point where I started letting them have it every time I talked to them. Nah, it, it would. It wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been no more of that. It would have been. Hey, where you want me to drop this truck at? That's what it would have been. After that, after, uh, after I would have got threatened like that, bro. It would have been. Where do you want me to drop this truck at? I, because I'm not waiting until Monday. Uh, you know, I'm not move. I'm not going on the property that that they already said that I can't be on. I'm already parked. You got a problem. So where do you want me to bring this truck at? You know what? Oh, better yet, I would have been like, better yet. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> GPS. Yeah. Sioux City, Iowa. Yeah, call the police and let them know that I'm bringing your truck back to the yard. How about that? So, oh, after, wait so, till we wait, wait, just wait till we get to my turn in. <laughs> so, so with with all that with all that said, I'm sure your time there was limited. So, what was what was what was the last what was the last issue and where did you take the truck to the the, the call of the day? <clears throat> Well, I fought with them because, well, she was my fiance at the time, but mm -hmm. she had to go for back surgery. Mm -hmm. Well, they've been telling me, I let them know a month prior that I need to be home for the surgery. And I was up in Illinois, and at the time we were down in Georgia, so it wasn't too bad to drive. Mm -hmm. well, all of a sudden, he's starting to tell me, oh, well, we can't get you home. And I about lost my... Uh, Marbles on that one. So but after sitting, so how but after arguing for about forty five minutes? Uh huh. Oh, oh, we okay. Yeah, we we got a load for you. Wow. <laughs> so you so did you did you make that delivery for him, or you brought the truck back, or what? What was the deal when bringing the truck back? I. I stuck it um, because I was already in talks with another company, and uh, you know they had asked me just to stick it out for a little bit longer, just to show retainability. Because all my companies, I can count on one hand, and each one I've been at several years. And they wanted, but, um, and they wanted you to stick it out with cake. No, that 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 don't even that that I don't even understand that one. Why would a why would another company after you did did you let them know of all the problems that you was having with K and B? Oh yes, but when they heard the phone conversation, uh, um, when when we actually get to the truck turning part, uh, yeah, um, they heard that conversation and they lost it. Okay. So why would they turn around and be like, yo, uh, stay with KB a little while longer so that, you know, you can get that. No. Uh, I, just to show, just to show, yeah, well, no, I completely understand where you're coming from, uh -huh. but I could kind of see where the company's coming from being, you know, they want to show retainability. Uh, like, no. you know, you're going to stick. No. But I, I completely agree. I want it out. Yeah. But once I got that phone call, um, or once I sent them that recorded phone call, Mm -hmm. They were like, 
oh, you need to get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, at, at that point, at, at the K and, at the K and B point, you already got nine months in, but how, 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 how long have you had in after K and B? Like what? Two years, three years, nine, eight. Uh, what? No. When, when I left K and B, I actually bought a truck and went on my own. No, how, how long? How no? While you was at K and B, you already you nine months in with K and B. But how long you was in all together with K and B total? Like oh, I was only, um, I think it was nine months, nine months and change of nothing but headaches. What uh, <laughs> what total? Oh, you, well, you did say this was ten years ago. So what? Ten? I mean, you did, what? K and B was the first company. No, K and B was actually by oh let's see, there was third company. Oh, okay. So this is so K and B was your third company within the ten years that you was driving. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I get okay, I, I get it now. Okay, so nine months. So we looking at maybe about what? About about a a year total with with K and B. At that time, pretty close to it. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So that's why, that's why. Now I get it. Now, see, I'm putting it together. Now I get. That's why the other company said, give it a little bit more time, so that you know, like they can, they can bring, they can bring you in by saying, okay, you got a year of trucking experience instead of saying you got nine months. You, yeah, because they, they were actually they, they were kind of sick because like, like I said I tried going to college. Well, mm-hmm. college wasn't for me, and basically the wife told me to get back on the truck. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So okay. that's how I ended up with uh, those uh, knuckleheads. Now it, it is safe to say that you know, being that you was with K and B, you know, like you know, almost ten years ago. It is safe to say that you know K and B has has changed a little since then, because now you know they got the guarantee paid. Did they have that when you was when you was with them? Uh, they had it, and they always find a way to get out of it. Okay. So back, and like so, I said, this, this was years ago. So, like you said, right. things might have changed. They might actually, actually give the drivers their paychecks now. Right, right. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. K and B. Well, this is uh, of course, like I said in the beginning, this is your experience with them and all like that, man. I mean, even though it was ten years ago, but it sounded like they were still doing that BS. So yeah, man. Yep, and I try to tell drivers, you know, they're like, oh, well, it's a good company. Well, there's, there was one KB driver I talked to. He's like, well, they put, um, they, that he abandoned the truck because he actually left him at one point. They hired him back, but he can't go anywhere else because his deck report screwed. Well, it was, uh, it was one driver that I talked to that I got a chance to talk to. Uh, he, you know, he, 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 he had a good, you know, he had a good experience with, uh, with KB at the time he had to leave because of, uh, because of reasons. I'm not sure. I forgot, but he said when it was time for him to come back on, KB wouldn't even bring him back on, even though that his experience with KB was, was a good one. So, Hmm. That's, that's, uh, a head scratcher in itself right there all right keith man well hey bro thank you very much man and and it sounds like you're uh you're busy but wait you said you had um you you had a uh a back what you had a back injury while you was in the military what what happened with your back bro uh jumping out of planes oh okay I i was one of those fools that fell out of perfectly good airplanes 
So you was so in the military, you was like what a a, a pair? What, what do you call it? A parachuter, par, pair diver? What? Uh, paratrooper. Paratrooper. Okay. Paratrooper. Okay. Okay. So, so you <laughs> you you would make them what like during the day drops or during the night drops? What? What was what, what was the interesting drop for you? The, I, well, I guess the I guess the interesting one is when you hurt your back. So what happened on that drop? Uh, actually, that one there, uh, we're actually test jumping a longer static line, which is which actually activates the parachute when you go out of the plane. Mm-hmm. It's actually connected to an anchor line inside. Well, a friend of mine and myself actually got tangled up underneath the plane. Mm. So there's only one parachute taking two of us down. And when I landed, I, I, I fell backwards, but landed on a rucksack. Ouch. So how long, how, how long, you, we, how long you was out of commission on, uh, on that one? Uh, well, I, I still did our operation that we're doing and, but it's just been a come and go type pain. <laughs> Ow. And now with the job I'm at, I'm constantly lifting and bending over, so it gets kind of tender at times. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, Keith, man, again, thank you very much for coming on. You guys know that the best conversation starts over here on the Lockout Man podcast show, and I really appreciate my guest, Keith, for uh, coming in and sharing his story. <laughs> Thank you very much, bro. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah. just be careful. And I just want to say this to drivers be careful mm-hmm. when you turn those trucks into K and B. You say you better be careful turning them in. <laughs> you might not get yeah, that. I you might that. not get that last paycheck. <laughs> I didn't get my last paycheck. Oh, damn it, man. <laughs> I was only joking <laughs> on that, but they kept you. No, they, that they, they kept your last paycheck. They kept my last paycheck. They they kept my last paycheck, and they wrote a receipt out for almost like I was an owner operator of all the stuff that was done that was in the truck, like cleaning and nits the and scratches. Lock, lock, and stuff. Yeah. <sighs> That's oh man, they they dogged me, and the only thing that saved my neck is my. Latest company that I went to after them said I had abandoned my truck. Well, I turned around and played back a recording, which the new company was like, oh, no, you need to get over here. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, I'm glad everything um, I'm glad everything worked out for you, and I'm hoping everything worked out for you in the future now because you said you – uh. You're you're not trucking anymore, so uh, you know. I hope everything work out for you. You know, uh, for you and your family, uh, well wishes and everything, bro. But I appreciate that, and hell, hope we talk again sometime. Yes, sir, we will, man. We will definitely get it in. You are a citizen, <laughs> and I will talk to you in a bit. Alrighty, my friend. Be safe out there. All right, man. Take it easy. <laughs>